dramatically improved. I'll go on to Dr. Naresh Babu, who is head of the department, Retina Services, Arvin Eye Care System, Madurai, to share his slide. First, we'll cover all the techniques. Uh, then we'll go for a discussion. Dr. Naresh. Uh, we can see your slides, Naresh. Uh, can you unmute yourself? We are seeing your slides, uh, but I can't hear your voice, Naresh. Yes. <clears throat> I, yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, Please. sorry for that. No. Okay. This one? What is this? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, just just over 10 seconds. Yeah. I have some issues here. With, uh, Stop share when you want to reshare. I have some issues with the. You have to only go to full screen, that's all. I can see your slides. Yeah. No, I'm seeing, but I'm not able to see. Okay, then I. Okay. Right. You can see me, right? Now it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now right. Okay. See. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Avanindra. Uh, so this course, I think we have been doing for the last almost eight, nine years. Thanks to Dr. Abhinindra for giving me an opportunity. Today, I'll be discussing uh, how to manage aphikia with a sutureless SFI well by Gabber's technique. So I'll skip all these things because uh, it has already been spoken by Dr. Ritesh. So we've got a lot of options like secondary PCI wells or scleral fixated eye wells by various techniques, glued eye wells, iris sutures. I'll be basically talking about a no flap, no glue, intrascleral eye wheel fixation, which was basically designed or uh, told to us by Dr. Gabas Kariath. I know I've been always a brand ambassador for uh, Gabas Kariath because uh, he's one of the fantastic surgeons I've seen in my life. And I had the opportunity of meeting him personally and uh, saying with him for close to uh, two weeks. Uh, this is Dr. Gabber who first gave us this SFI wheel. So the basic difference between the scleral fixated eye oil and glued eye oil is, except for, uh, I mean, uh, the glue, the procedure is almost going to be the same, but it will not be raising the flap. So I'll just go step by step how we do a SFI oil. So this is a case of, uh, first, what we do is basically, this is a case of a subluxated lens you can make out. So after doing a localized spiritomy, here I am going to fix a three-piece rigid lens. That's the reason I have done almost 270-degree peritomy. But nowadays, or most of the time, if the patient can afford, we can go for a foldable lens. Nowadays, I've started using Auro Labs uh, uh, Auro View, uh, which is a three-piece foldable lens, no financial interest. That is quite inexpensive and very good for this technique. So we have to make two scleral pockets. I use a 23 gauge uh, MBR blade. Initially, I was using 24 gauge needle, then the troker. Now I am very comfortable using a 23 gauge MBR blade. You can make out. I am just uh, holding the muscle just for the support and making two pockets, 180 degrees away. The most important thing is uh, what I keep telling is like you would have found that almost 12 cases of uh, Dr. Ritis uh, had a vitreous hemorrhage. So that happens because when we make the pockets at the three and nine o'clock meridian, because that is the site of entry of long posterior artery. So when we are making the pockets at the three and nine o'clock, there is every chance that we will be having bleeding while uh, entering into the vitreous cavity. So I always tell our fellows that I also follow that. We are slightly eccentric in the sense uh, two and uh, eight or uh, four and uh, 10 o'clock meridian is fine. So slightly one or one and a half clock of us away from three and nine o'clock is fine. So after making two scleral pockets. This is just an animation. 1.5 millimeter posterior to the limbus we make with MBR. So it's not a through and through. It need not be through and through. So on either side, 180 degree exactly away. And uh, if you're going to do it for the first time, you can use a marker, but usually it is not needed. But see to that, your 180 degree, uh, it should be 180 degree apart. Otherwise it causes a slight decentration. After that, this is the usual scleral tunnel for a subluxated lens. And if it is going to be your uh, <clears throat> foldable lens, you can go for a clear corneal incision where you can use an injector to inject your eye oil. But here I am going to use a full, uh, I mean, a rigid three-piece uh, PMMA lens. That's the reason. 
after entering into the vitreous cavity this is another case i think okay we'll just go we have to enter the vitreous cavity with the help of a 24 gauge im needle exactly at the end of the scleral pockets where we have made on either side so just to give just a 0.5 mm gap between your uh, scleral pocket and the entry you made otherwise a lot of haptic will be exposed so once it is done we can use this is a rigid pmm lens i am using a gaber forceps you can see you insert the lens always hold the tip of the haptic so if you hold the shaft of the haptic there is every chance the haptic will be broken and uh, you will have to replace the lens the most important thing about uh, uh, tucking the haptic is don't tuck too much just into the scleral pocket hold the tip and tuck being a vitreoretinal surgeon i am very comfortable putting the second haptic into the vitreous cavity so that it is easy for me to pick it from uh, the vitreous cavity and again the gabbers uh, forceps which we are using to insert the haptic it is a pair of uh, forceps one is a curved one the one which we are using the other one is a straight which is used through the uh, i mean sclerotomy to pick the haptic from the vitreous cavity and it is a 25 gauge and it is uh, even though it's uh, disposable it can be used for so many cases so after excising the haptic straight away you tuck it so that the second haptic will be in the vitreous cavity so this is how we pick the second haptic you can do it by handshake technique also so i have held the tip of the second haptic and usually i use a forceps and just keep supporting on the sclera to give a counter pressure okay when you give the counter pressure when you externalize it is easy actually otherwise it will be having a pulling effect after holding you can uh, make out we always hold the tip you can see the curved uh, gabbers forceps curved tip just to go into the scleral pocket which is made and tuck it sufficiently in case if the other side is over tucked you can release it with the thing so this is a case where we have done a lensectomy same actually the pockets are made and here the lavitation is done as i have told we are entering into the vitreous cavity with the help of a needle just a 24 gauge im needle once it is done use a gabbers forceps or you can use any forceps you can use a 23 gauge or 25 gauge this is again a rigid lens three piece pmma so it is quite inexpensive just hold the tip never the shaft and the most important thing is when the shaft tip is snipped more than 2 mm we always advise to replace that lens the reason is if the tip is snipped more than 1 mm there is every chance that post operatively one of the haptic can dislocate because there is no sufficient uh, i mean uh, length of the haptic so this is the pod one of the case which we have done and these are the other cases where we have done this technique so the basic uh, the advantage of this technique is there is no cost for the glue and it can be done with any three piece either foldable or a rigid lens and uh, nowadays we stopped even doing the conjunctival flaps you can do transconjunctively also uh, if, if you want to do it comfortably go for uh, what you call the gabbers forceps otherwise you can use any of the intraocular forceps so these are uh, the few cases the advantages uh, it can be done in a dislocated lens or provided it is a three piece dislocated lens you can use the same lens it can be used in cases uh, with iol ctr complex dislocation can be combined with any of the corneal procedure and it can be used in traumatic lens also the most important uh, advantage is like same as uh, uh, what do you call the glued iol you don't need any uh, i mean a special haptic architecture you don't need to have special inventory you can use the three piece lens which is available in your inventory but the limitations are only three piece i wells can be fixed silicon lens or other a single haptic cannot be used because that single haptic i mean uh, single piece i wells the haptic can degenerate or it may break while externalizing and these are the complications which has already been discussed i don't want to discuss again and a few of our publication this uh, is uh, our publication on uh, evaluating the sutureless bluless flapless for uh, pediatric age group so it was done in 40 of the 25 eyes patients with a mean age of 13 years with a standard deviation of uh, 3. Point plus or minus 3.7 years usually sfi well i don't do in children less than 7 or 8 years because that is the time you get the proper scleral rigidity so 
or the conclusion of this trial was the refractive error induced is very, very minimal in these lenses. Of course, we'll have to correct depending upon the age. It is a suitable procedure for children who are non-compliant with the uh, spectacles. And the complication profile is almost similar to that which has been reported in the adults. And another publication is we have analyzed our cases in the past three years where we have done close to 1,311 eyes. So these are the complications and I mean the indications and we had almost 1.7% of the eyes developing retinal detachment. As uh, it was moderated by Dr. Avnindra, RRD happening in these cases managing the vitreous properly, especially at the site of sclerostomy, where you have to clear that area completely of the vitreous. Having the vitreous and doing this procedure in the presence of uh, vitreous can lead to traction and uh, can lead to this complication. And in fact, one of the worst thing which we have come across in this study is like um, almost 70% of the uh, eye uh, reattached with the uh, one surgery, but uh, nearly one third required more than one surgery. And if you see the final reattachment was only in 76%, which is much, much, much lesser than a primary regimentogenous retinal detachment. So once RD happens in these cases, we found that the complication is very, I mean, the PBR chains are very advanced, managing them is very difficult. And uh, the last uh, study which uh, we have published is on 10 year trend on uh, uh, the incidence of SFI will. If you see actually the <clears throat> uh, culture positive endophthalmitis is uh, only one case actually. So it is almost similar to the rest of the endophthalmitis which we get in post IOL. And the latest publication was done by one of our fellows, Dr. Saurav. He has published in uh, uh, 2021 IJO. So he has given a frugal model for the trainers how to do it. Actually, people who are interested in doing this technique and refer to this article. And before concluding, I would like to tell that this is a wonderful technique right from the pediatric age group to the old age group used with any of the three pieces. And uh, uh, there is no need for any, what you call the glue and a very simple technique to practice also. With that, I would like to conclude and I would like to thank Avnindra for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Avnindra, and thank you once again. Uh, thank you, Dr. Naresh, uh, a very nice presentation. Uh, actually, uh, what I insisted before, you have put an add-on to that key vitreous management is a must in these kind of cases. And maybe the incidence is pretty high because the eye, what we are tackling is all complicated eye, trauma, subluxation, and uh, uh, post-operative complications like PCR, vitreous mismanagement, vitreous traction. So uh, incidence of... Uh, Regmatogenous retinal detachment is will be higher in these group of patients. And uh, we also know if you have a drop lens or a drop nucleus, uh, the success rate of regmatogenous retinal detachment is lower as compared to uh, the normal regmatogenous retinal detachment.